Welcome back to Worldwide, and right now, my favorite segment on the show, with the possible exception of the pick of the week, it's AskWCW.com. You know the drill. Find WCW.com, find the Worldwide link. Email us your question for a WCW superstar if we use your question on the air, and if you send us your snail mail address, you will get this WCW Worldwide T-shirt. Look at this high-quality product, I tell you. Yeah, the budget has really been uh, kicked up for 2001, hasn't it? Have you been wearing this? Oh, what are you talking about? Oh. No, never. That smells like a locker room. Anyway, AskWCW.com. Last week, I know, Mike, Tanay, you were teary-eyed in the green room what? because nobody is asking you questions on AskWCW.com. No, 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 that wasn't it at all. I was just upset that now that we have big prizes like the T-shirt, that someone asked a question about the cat's shoe size and that they want, they want a shirt for that. Yeah? What's your That's, point? I want to get some questions that make sense. Toward that end, we've got two questions for the professor himself, Mike Tenet. Two for me this week? Two for you this week. I didn't know they had prison's wow. uh, computer system up and running down there in Jackson, Mississippi. Chris Walker has written in. His question for Mike Tenet is this one. This is the first of two. I would like to know, with all of the young talent in World Championship Wrestling, who do you think has the best chance of being a future WCW World Champion? That's a good question, actually. It's a terrific question. I think probably most of our viewers would think that I'd concentrate on a group like the Natural Born Thrillers. And certainly in Sean Stasiak, in Chuck Palumbo, in uh, Mike Sanders, Mark Zindrak. It, there's plenty of young talent there, and especially, I think, as far as Sean O'Hare goes, as well as Chuck Palumbo, possibly in the future. But I think it's going to be a great 2001 for Team Canada, because in Mike Awesome, as well as Lance Storm, I think those are probably the two people that I would look to be World's Heavyweight Champion. And Scott, I think I've narrowed it down, and Lance Storm is obviously a great technical wrestler, great mat wrestling, so much in-ring expertise. But I'm going to have to go with the big man, Mike Awesome. Six foot six, 280 pounds, over 10 years of experience. I've narrowed it down. It's going to be Mike Awesome as my choice for a future world's heavyweight champion. Scott. <laughs> Scott. Mike <laughs> Awesome. Mike Awesome. You have a second question for me. Second you. question. I'm sorry. I like this. Ask MikeTanay.com. No, it's not. It's AskWCW.com, please. Well, whatever. That's this week. Brett Cardi of St. Thomas, Ontario, Canada, with our second question for the professor here on Worldwide, writes in, here we go. What made you want to become a wrestling announcer, and who were your big influences? Another good question. Two very, very good questions. Well, let me think about this for a second. Well, I think like most WCW broadcasters, it was because I was a wrestling fan for so many years. As far as influences go, well, I grew up in Southern California, and the preeminent wrestling announcer of the 1950s and 1960s was Dick Lane. Certainly, I was influenced by him. The night train, Dick Lane. No relation to the football player at all. No. In the 70s and 80s, of course, the proliferation of cable around the country, and we all really grew accustomed to the voice of Gordon Soley, the late dean of all the WCW announcers. So I would have to say probably those would be my biggest influences. Scott, did I ever tell you about how I broke into professional wrestling as an announcer? Not today. Well, it was great. You know, I was working in Las Vegas, and uh, happened to be, well, invited to be the host of a radio program. Went from there, it was a national radio show. From there, joined World Championship Wrestling. How about, remember 1994, When Worlds Collide? Mm -hmm. What a great pay-per-view that event was. Introduced not only myself, but a lot of the luchadors to a World Championship Wrestling. Brent, thanks for your question. You know, and then I was thinking back, remember Steve Mongo McMichael? Oh. He used to be on the Nitro broadcast team, but then it was September of 1996 when I replaced Mongo. Mongo McMichael. And, you know, in addition to this worldwide broadcast, I'm on Thunder, Nitro, the pay-per-views. How about those internationals that we do yes. every week as well? International broadcasting here in World Championship Wrestling. So really, Mike that's it as far as the history goes. Now, other influences, you'd have to consider Tony Schiavone. Yeah. I mean, our broadcast colleague. Of course. And I, I, I remember when I was just a young child and, and watched Tony, and obviously he's been a big influence to me as well. A young child. Yes. Great. So you've got Jimmy Lennon, Ed Whalen, Barry Richards. Who else did you say? Did I mention Gene Okerlund? You did not. Well, I, you know, I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Mean Gene as well. Let that be a lesson to you fans and viewers of Worldwide. Don't ask questions of what? the professor, Mike Tenay. I thought it was AskMikeTenay.com. We're going to try and fire that up next week. But when we come back on Worldwide, we're going to have an exclusive review. 2001, the year of the professor. I think it's well, the year really of the chicken. It really has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? Speaking of a ring, uh -huh. when we come back...